Hey there guys, I've been asked to do a tutorial on how to harvest vinegar eels. Um, I can't remember exactly who asked, I'm sorry. I think it was the username Gulp on Oz Aqua Forums, but anyone else who's seen this, it's just as relevant for you. Um, well, I have my vinegar eel culture, my main culture, um, which is apple cider vinegar, treated water, and there's disintegrating apple down the bottom you put your starter into that um, and they grow in there and eat the bacteria that's in the vinegar and they need the apple for some sugar um, and things like that if you make it too acidic they die if you make it not acidic enough they die so it's about getting a bit of a balance I think I do mine um, three quarters apple cider vinegar to one quarter treated water sometimes I do a half half um, they seem to like that mix um, every few months I add a little bit more apple cider vinegar and plus I sell these as starter cultures and mature cultures so I need to top it up um, every couple of months when I run out so yeah as you can see this is getting down a bit it was up the top um, so this is how I harvest them I don't know how other people do it but this is what I do I take coffee filters just normal filter papers that you can get for your coffee machine take one of those Try and do all this one handed. I did try and set up a tripod for my camera, but the tripod's broken and it kept going on an angle and getting in my way. So, okay, take my coffee filter, just open it up, place it into a glass. Just any glass. I don't have a problem reusing cups that I've used for cultures because if you give them a good enough wash, you're not going to get contaminated with anything. You know, it's like drinking water as far as I'm concerned. I know that sounded silly. But, um, yeah, you just wash it in hot soapy water. The worms aren't going to stay in the glass or anything like that. Um, so it doesn't concern me. If it concerns you, then use an old glass that you don't use for drinking anymore. You know, use your own judgment. It's all what you're comfortable with. I'm comfortable with this, so that's what I do. I kind of turn the filter over the top of the cup so it's not going to fall inside. Like that. And you got a little section down the bottom where it's going to drain out of. And then take my culture, measuring cup, this one's a third of a cup size, doesn't matter what you use, as long as you can get the culture out of the container. Take about a third of a cup of it, and it depends how many um, fry you have to feed, if you want a larger feed you use more solution. So you take the solution out, you pour it into the coffee filter. Now, that is going to slowly dribble down through the coffee filter into the cup. And maybe I shouldn't have used so much because this might take a while. But, as you can see, slowly dribbling down. I actually sometimes put an elastic band around the top here. Because sometimes it still likes to fall in. Or if I'm not going to watch it, I'll put an elastic band around so nothing happens and I can walk off and do whatever I need to do. So it does take a little bit of time. I really should have thought about this before I did it. I might speed this up. Okay, I'm back. And thanks to the wonders of video editing and modern technology, we have come back to find it has finished draining. So what you're left with is a wet coffee filter. <coughs> now what I do, this is going to be hard to do one-handed, but I'll give it a go. You don't want to throw this out because this is where the worms are. This leftover vinegar solution goes straight back into your culture because there are going to be worms in there that are too small to get caught in the filter and you want them to grow up and be big strong worms to feed to your fry. So you replace that straight back into your culture. Now you pull apart the coffee filter. I've just pulled it along the seams so that it opens up. Now what I do is I take a jug of treated water and I dip the coffee filter in the water. Now you guys aren't going to be able to see the vinegar eels because they are microscopic. They are tiny and I don't have a strong enough camera to do microscopic filming. It's just a digital camera that I use for taking photos. Um, I dip that in there a bit, jiggle it around, try and get as many of the worms loose from that material as you can and squeeze it out. Now you could reuse that some way, I don't bother, I'm a very wasteful person. Now I'm going to try and help you see the vinegar eels, I don't think you're going to be able to really. No, I don't think there's much hope, but I can see them. When I hold it up to the light, 
I can see the vinegar eels wiggling around in that water. Now I would take that water and go and tip it into my fry tank to feed my fry. Um, I would do it this way only if I need to be adding um, treated water every day to my fry tank as it is, which you do in the first week or two anyway because you add more water every day to kind of bring it up to the level up if that's the way you breed, which is the way I breed. Um, if I wasn't going to be adding any more clean water to the tank or I didn't need to, I would just take the filter, open it up and dip that straight into the tank and wiggle it around and try and get the worms off, take it out, squeeze it. Be careful that you don't get any fry on the filter paper though. I've had that happen before. You've got to really take it out easy, wiggle it as you do so they kind of swim away, pull it out and have a look on the filter paper before you squeeze it out if you have any fry. If you do, flick them off back into the tank gently obviously then squeeze it out because the squeezing of it will release more vinegar eels into the water as well so that is my vinegar eel harvesting technique i hope that helps people um have a great day bye